Welcome to the Supercar Connection podcast. Find us on social media at Supercar Connection and full episodes weekly on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. I'm Gavin, this is my boy Joe, and we're here to talk about cars. Um, are you guys from LA then? I'm from Downey. Oh, okay. So I grew, that's kind of where I grew up. So I guess LA too, quote unquote, but not yeah. like, not your LA, LA, you're like deep LA, actual LA. Oh, got it. And then I'm from Dallas. Oh shit. Okay. Way far away. Yep. Texas homegrown boy. That's funny. I almost moved to Texas. Really? <laughs> you came Probably not from... Dallas. I was going to go to Austin, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Right that now. checks out. Yeah, definitely not. If anyone's going to, in, going to Texas. Yeah, he's doing so, the opposite well, I like of the Dallas, fact. but I feel like Dallas was. Boring. I get Dallas and Houston confused. There's a lot of car people in Dallas, though, like the like yes. hyper car owners. Absolutely. Yeah. Which was like part of me was like, oh, like that would be cool because then I could like get into that scene because like the scene down here, the hyper car owners are very like childish. Very childish. But I don't know. Dallas it's is like, like cool. It's just yeah, it's boring. Yeah. Like Houston Extremely. is fun. I really like like the food there, and then Austin has like the bars. There's a pretty big scene so. in Houston too. Is there? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I think it's see a. Di- that. I think it's a little bit of a different scene in Houston. There's it's a lot of hyper cars level. in Houston. In in Houston. Really? So I don't know. A lot of the oil money's out there, like in deep Dallas, mm-hmm. like in like parts of Fort Worth that you don't even know exist. And all of a sudden, you just there's see oil money in Houston too. All the offshore oil, dude. I don't know, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, but like that guy who like crashed his Dallas. dad's Pagani, like that's in Dallas. Yeah, and Gage. they have like all those hypercars there. We yeah. got a lot of hate. We posted. We, we talked. I think one of our reels was like we talked about like where can you see the most hypercars or just the craziest car scene. And he was like L.A. or like O.C. OC. And I was like Miami's probably up there as well. In hypercars. Hypercars. Yes, I promise you. Go to Boca Raton and just, or my bad, I guess Miami, Florida, South South Florida, Southwest Florida, eh. Southeast Florida. Boca yeah. Raton is crazy, I is promise it? you. Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, that like when you get north is kind of like OC. Miami is like LA. Yeah, well, Miami the, is all rented Lamborghinis. That's and what stuff. I'm saying. It's all <laughs> rented Urises, rented Lambos, yeah. everything yeah. in between. You get up more, that's like the old traditional money that's where you get the hyper cars. Interesting. But Dallas okay. came at us in the comments. They were like, and Houston too. Just, this Texas, Dallas, the state yeah. of Texas just took a vendetta out at us. And they were but like, Dallas how can you forget has, about like, us? so many cars, though. Like, nobody anyway, cares about so Texas. Many, it's a bigger area. And I feel anyway. like they come to every show yeah. because it's like. There's only like two shows. That's right, the whole right, thing. Right. Yeah. Here it's like every weekend. So you're not going to go to like South OC Cars and Coffee and see a Pagani every weekend. No, because they're all spread out often. too. But those guys once a you month. You see them often. Often. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is like here, there's so much more potential for anything to happen. Like Iluso can throw up a, a, a car meet and then all of a sudden South yeah. OC is literally bi-weekly. And then if Novara wants to throw something or even like, I can even just go on just name, name. We got invited to three different car meets tomorrow. Tomorrow. Do you have anything going on? Any car meets tomorrow? I haven't been going to many car meets because a lot of them have been like drives yeah. and yeah. I don't trust the drivers. That's very and true. And my driving record freaks me out too because I don't want to get pulled over again. Your driving records, you say, huh? Yeah, dude. What's wrong? I with your have driving like record? I have like a couple like rec- like two reckless on my <laughs> record, which is crazy because I've had like five, but like only two of them two stuck. Are so it was like you know it's a good percentage, but like two are docked. Five is not. <laughs> two are two are docked. You want to intro us then? Just yeah, jump right yeah. into it. We're, we'll, we'll intro, but oh, I forgot we weren't. <laughs> yeah, no, we're honestly, we're going. We, we're we going. probably it'll probably we'll leave be it in there anyway. Yeah. The, yeah, the yeah, intro will just be like three minutes in. We're back in Novara Motorsports. Yeah. Uh, you've seen us here before. We've got some sick cars behind us. Um, great shop down in OC. Um, shout, shout out, out Cosm. There it is. Thank yep. you, Cosm. Yep. Always Kossum, hooking yeah. it up. Yeah. Um, we're here with Amber, also known as Bambi. Kill Bambi. Kill dot Bambi at Kill dot Bambi on Instagram um, and probably the other platforms too. You can find her. Um, but thank you for coming on. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do? Um, okay. Well, that's so difficult. Um, I mean, like, the main thing I do is, like, cars. I love cars, everything about them. So I feel like my life kind of revolves around that area. Um, I do, like, gaming, like, streaming. I kind of, like, I've been lazy about that, but I'm trying to get back into it. What do you play? Like, don't Fortnite, tell me Fortnite. Call of Duty. Oh. I like shooter <laughs> games, but I kind of play, like, everything. Something. Yeah. I play, like, a little bit of everything. It's just, like, Fortnite's just, like, fun to, like, chill with friends because it's not, like, too much thinking. Mental, yeah. It's literally just, it's like, just like, you're kind of just, like, chilling and talking and, like, shooting here and there. No build mode? No. No. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be chill. That wouldn't be chill. No, I don't want to get built on by, like, a nine-year-old that can, like, build the Empire State literally building on me. Literally destroy you like, in two seconds. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not even worth it. But I don't Get know, like, shit call- on! <laughs> <laughs> literally. Like, Call of Duty. Like I don't know. I play a little bit of everything, though. Yeah. So, like, Pal World just came out. I played played a little bit of that. Well, that's fair. What else? 
Um, I make music, I DJ. Uh, I was doing a lot of ghost producing, which was like my main thing for a really long time. You make music as well? Yeah. You do everything. I, yeah, that's like, that's, that's, that's why I'm like, I don't even know what to say. I kind of just like do like Damn. a little bit of everything. I gotta step my, I gotta step my game. I know, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> get more involved then. This what kind of music? Good. I think I do a like lot. Like EDM. EDM. Mainly, yeah. So I was, I started with like ghost producing um, for a few artists and I was doing like electronic music and then around like 2018-ish, I like was started making my own mm -hmm. and releasing it on my own and started DJing and stuff. And I don't know, I always just kind of really like being behind it rather than like up front DJing, but like I've done a few festivals here and there. Um, Can I ask what ghost Bambi? producing is? Yeah, I have no idea what ghost producing is, and I so just, like I, I would, about, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> like I, when it comes to the music side of anything, I don't know anything. So I just want to embrace it for anybody else that doesn't know what ghost. Well, it's is. so basically like I would get hired to make music for different DJs. Like some oh, people okay, just like you, you. they're trying to build their brand and they don't know how to make music. So I would do that for them, and like basically like they would take all the credit, or it'd be like bigger DJs that like they don't have time to make music anymore like you know they're, they're, they have so much they have to like go to press events yeah. they have to like perform travel blah, blah, like blah. tiesto so, like, has barely any time to like create so you're right. just like here yeah. Yeah, for example. Bangers, so they then... typically like hire like a few people to like make the songs for them or that's, like at least like do wild. like majority of how it how do you and tell then... if, if somebody is like legitimately making the music or not then well is there like the a disclosure because well, like... the, the thing is like with big djs for example i'd say like 90 percent of them like they know how to make music they just don't have the time so it's like i can respect that which is fine. Right. But then there's like some artists that are like up and coming and they just like really want to be a DJ or like they've been DJing and they have a name in DJing, but they don't know how to make music. But like to build the brand higher, they need their own music. That so sense. that's kind of crazy. They need other people to make their music so they can go get the Lambo. Exactly. Yeah. So they're, they get to a point they're like, yeah, music, that music stuff that I got started with, forget about it. I'm, the, I'm, I'm on a new, bigger, better. So people place. just get picked. They're like, you are going to be a star. We're going to get a bunch of people to make music for you and build you up and boom. Yeah, but if you kind of think because this about bucket it. on your head looks good. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you think about like the music industry like that, like a lot of the time, like you can't just be like good at making music and then like do well. Like you need to have a whole presence. You need to like look cool. You have to have a good attitude. You need to be able to have a stage presence. Absolutely. I mean, like there's a lot that goes into it. Your entire 100%. brand, like literally, it is you brand. Kind of like yeah. even like even like social media influencing to a certain degree. Like you have to be able to be like on camera, presentable, know how to talk, yeah, exactly. know what to say, how to say, how to move, everything in between. Like it literally, they directly correlate like right. ridiculously. I feel like most like entertainment business stuff is all about like, if you can do it, other people can do the rest for you, you know? Absolutely. So anything else, anything else under the portfolio? Yeah. Um, I mean, other than like, like the like normal jobs that I do, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, that <laughs> Those works. aren't interesting, so who cares about no, this? No, no, no worries. <laughs> um, so how'd you, how'd you get into cars? Um, I've always just kind of been into cars. It's like, I can't really say like what got me into cars. I kind of just have always like growing up. I tended to always have like guy friends just cause like I gamed and like they were into cars. So I was just like into cars, like hot wheels and stuff. And then like fast and furious. And then like my dad really liked cars. So it's just kind of like, and my mom also really liked cars. She didn't like know anything about them, but like she really liked them. So I was always right. around them. So it just kind of was like, it got to the point where it was like, oh, this is so cool. I want to learn more. And then I just kind of got obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> and then I started like racing. Um, and then I got like really into like how cars work and like everything about them. And, and now I'm here. <laughs> racing like real racing or mm -hmm. like people on the street? No, no, no. I did like real racing. Really? A little bit of both. Yeah. A little bit of both. I mean a little bit of both. Yeah, we don't, like... we don't shy away from the both. What <laughs> kind of racing? I did GT3 racing. Really? Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, so that's really, wild. So I'm saying she's got a hell of a portfolio. For <laughs> real? <laughs> Literally. How long I, did you do that? Um, I did it for like two or three years. I stopped doing it in like 2021. Yeah. That's when I quit. It got expensive. <laughs> then you I started like getting the reckless, the little reckless driving on the road. Well, you actually couldn't my get, my take it on the track. My <laughs> first <laughs> reckless I got when I turned 18. Oh, okay. really? Yeah. I wasn't even like really like driving. I was going to Vegas. I had all my friends in the car. We were going to Vegas to go to EDC. And Sounds about right. I, I just like always just had like a lead foot. So I was just kind of driving, like swerving through traffic, like didn't really realize what was going on. We were just listening to music, whatever. I had like four Red Bulls. You're, so, like, you're in the zone. Just like in the zone. Bob and then and I got pulled so over. Deep in the yeah. racing yeah. scene with the Red Bulls, too. <laughs> I had like four yeah, exactly. Red Bulls, dude. She was... ran like 600 MGs of caffeine. Dude, it was like what eight car in were you the morning. Driving? I was in my, it wasn't. Tell me like Nissan Altima was... or something like that. No, it was like a CLA. Okay, yeah. So you were pushing then. That CLA had wings, literally. It, it, it had it, the wings I had. It gave it, like it wings. It was native, crazy. You know, it I was like. tweaking, dude. Four Red Bulls deep, like the big ones too. I don't know. It was like eight in the morning too. On the way to EDC with the music <laughs> bumping, you're like the zone probably just took over. Yep. Oh yeah, I didn't even I didn't even realize it, and then I got pulled over. It was my first time getting pulled over too, 
And I just like, I was like, uh, hi. I didn't even know how to talk to the cop. Like, right. I, I think I was like maybe a little like rude because I just didn't know what, what was happening. He's like, so you were speeding. And I'm like, no, I wasn't. And he was like, I, I got you on, on radar. Oh, I was no. like, what's radar? <laughs> no, Amber, yeah, you can't never say that to the cop. Never I know to a cop. I like yeah. just turned 18. <laughs> like, I was just like there. Like, I was. Uh, what's the best answer? I don't know. Honestly, in my experience, when it comes to dealing with police officers, I just, whatever they say, I'm like, yes, sir, you're right. I 100% screwed up. I did this and that. What do you think? Am I, I taking the wrong approach to it? If you say, yes, sir, then you're admitting guilt, though. Well, it's a certain, okay, there's a certain level of admitting guilt. Again, putting everyone on game here right now. When, a, you, when you roll, a police officer rolled to your window, okay? First thing he's thinking, again, everything that's going on in today's day and age, you have no idea what he's thinking when he walks up to your window, Right. You, you roll the window down, you look at him, and you were going, let's say we were doing like 110 or something like that. He's like, you know you're speeding, right? If you go, I don't think so. I don't, you didn't, you didn't clock me right. And then he's going to be like, okay, th I'm getting this guy. Versus you go, you're absolutely right, sir. I apologize. Then he kind of goes, ah, this kid might be a nice kid. Like he just get him one time. And then you get he's in a hurry today. I'm exactly. He was in a hurry. He's doing something, whatever happens. Versus you're like, no, there's no way. Like, no, dude, you're tripping. But like, go ahead. Tell me. I'm telling you. Middle though, because it's like if you're like, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Then you just like admitted it. You're and not then, wrong. Like, he can use that if you fight it later. So you're I feel like wrong. it could be like you know, like I wasn't aware, you know. But like, I really apologize if I was doing X, Y, and Z. That might be a better. Tactic. But like, if you just like say like, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. Then like he, you just gave him like the go to get you. Like, look, I was just going with traffic. I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah. How fast did you think I was going? Yeah. This GT3 started trying to go. and You I was were going 118. I'm going to let him smoke this me and then talk crap. Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? No, well, absolutely Officer, not. you were also going that speed. Otherwise, you wouldn't have gotten me. Exactly. So. How'd you catch me? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> How are we even sitting here having this conversation? I should be dusted already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you were also speeding. So technically, this shouldn't even count. That honestly, now when you start in the intro, you're like my driving record. I was like, if you ripped it off six Red Bulls deep, everything or four Red Bulls deep, that I can only imagine how everything goes. Have you ever had like a crazy, crazy like pullover experience or like a police experience? Well, automotive related, automotive related, obviously. Like automotive, like getting pulled over. I, I've, I mean, I, my only pullovers have ever been automotive related. I didn't mean like that. I mean, like, I've, <laughs> I've had like a crazy police <laughs> experience. Oh, I've, no. I've had a crazy police experience, not car related. Like I was, I don't, I don't want to tell a story, but like no, I was, we, we won't go yeah, into that. Go we into won't That's go what there. I more meant because I've had some crazy. Police I mean, experience. I don't know. I feel like just typically when I get pulled over, they're usually really mean to me. I feel like a lot of the time it was like, when I first got my car, I was like a lot younger. So I feel like they would kind of see me and they would be like, oh, like her dad bought her this car. Like she's just like, well, the envy well. comes out. In the yeah. Way. And yeah. so then they like get really mean to me and then I'll like show them my registration and then they see my name and they get even more mean. And it's just like really confusing. So I always had like a problem with that because like they would always be mean to me. Like, honestly, I think recently, like they've been nicer to me. I guess like I'm more mature now, <laughs> but like, because I got my car when I was like 20. So they were a lot more mean to me like i got pulled over this car you got when you were 20 yeah yeah, yeah this so, is what you mean yes i this don't know i feel like the craziest pullover story was like i was on a rally once and i was racing like these two ferraris um and we were we were kind of like in the front of the pack and everyone was behind us because i don't even know we were going like fast fast we don't have um, to it. <laughs> and then we were like typically if you're going that fast like i would feel like they don't want to get you because it would be more dangerous that way but they pulled out right in front of us and blocked the highway and like we were going pretty fast right i almost thought that that was unsafe because we were like this close to like we could have ran like rammed them like Literally. yeah maybe we're going fast but like you also like put your life and our life at stake by like putting yourself in front of did us did they like do the swerve with the lights on or like they legitimately were like sideways on the freeway no they were sideways like they were parked on there were two of them parked right here and we're like going this way and then like we saw them so we started slowing down and then they just whipped it out right in front of us and just blocked the highway and then they got behind us too so that we like couldn't reverse but obviously what are we gonna do like run at that point no, but literally. it's just like what it, happens if you crash into that who covers, that's what i'm who saying covers that I, like, I imagine the police force probably has a good insurance policy, but like, oh, who yeah, yeah. If, if they just throw themselves out and you're going 140, you can't break. You know who covers it is the taxpayer. The taxpayer, yeah. The ta yeah. It's always going to go back to The us. taxpayers <laughs> cover that 100%. Yeah, but I don't know. I felt like that was a little crazy of them to do because, like, I understand, like, you want to pull us over, but, like, get behind us and then turn your lights on. Like, putting right. yourself in front, like, is not only dangerous for them, but, like, us too. Exactly. So, so I they, don't know. They got you all for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the second one that I Did have. Did you at least there. win the so race? That was a three for one? Well, I was in the middle. We weren't like racing. We were just kind of like we were vibing. driving together. Just, it was all vibes, yeah. Red Bulls, EDM, going crazy. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> That's it. Just all pure vibes. Yeah. Like, we got an R8 and two Ferraris here. 
Yeah. <laughs> they probably got a call like a while back and then they like yeah. waited for us, but. 100%. I've, I've been on a, like not a rally, but I think I did a Cars and Coffee like, I don't think it was maybe like a year ago, right around there. And we was South OC Cars and Coffee and we met up at like one of the mobile gas stations up here in like, um, like the Santa Margarita Hills up here. And literally radio calls in and all of a sudden you just see helicopters just trying to like chase everybody and like pinpointing where people are going. So like everyone has to disperse and go left, go right. Cause when the helicopter's up there, I don't know if you ever had like that type of experience, but like they'll literally call out, they'll be like, Ferrari's going right, going down the, the five South. You got this mm-hmm. one going down this way, PCH like that. They go to the extremes. It's yeah. neat for speed hot pursuit down here. It in, literally is. In Southern California. They got yeah. the, heli- the helicopters on deck. Yes. Ready well, to go. a lot of the times on rallies, like I'd always have a friend that like had um, the setup in his car where like he could hear when we're getting called in. So, he could hear it? Yeah. So he would like hear police it like, live, like a police radio. He'd hear it live Damn. when we're getting called in. So like we would know and he, we would have like walkie talkies and he would tell us like, hey, I, know, like, that's a full extent. I know so we you need know? that Are yeah i mean it takes up like a whole like seat though right. like he doesn't have like a passenger seat but like it was always really helpful what do you rallies. need a passenger seat for there's, there's no it's purpose nice to have a passenger on rallies it's a long drive you're driving like over a few states that's true that's definitely true. <laughs> i can just say the uh the little radar detector does not work very that well that doesn't do crap no. that doesn't do crap catches way too many like <laughs> walgreens slidey well, doors you have to turn off turn off k-band have it only go for ka k-band K A band. Yes, literally. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But the K band is like what's annoying because that'll like go for like any sign. Okay, so cut off K band. Yes. For all of you out there, if you use a radar, unless you're in Arizona. Unless you're in Arizona, we don't, we don't drive. Arizona. Okay. No. <laughs> we don't need to be in Arizona. No. Montana, the CHP, Mon- no Montana driving only. That's all. That's it. Yeah, hundred percent. In the Ferrari. That's all. <laughs> so you have this R8. It's behind us. If you're not watching and you're just listening on your way to work this morning, there's a pretty crazy R8 behind us with the big wing, crazy exhaust. Tell us uh, a little bit about this. You got it when you were 20. You've had her a couple of years now. Break yeah. it down, Amber. Break it down. Break yeah. down. Um, everything yes, about I got it. her Break when I was 20. Even that story when you got it, that's got that had to be crazy. Um, when you were 20? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's not really a story. I kind of just like was looking for one for a while. Uh, originally, I wanted to get one with like red interior, but at the time there was like not very many um, for sale. So I just found this one and I called them and told them to bring it to my house with a bow <laughs> and they brought it to my house with a bow That's amazing. so it was pretty cool uh really exciting um i didn't really have much left over to do things to it but i was yeah. like i got the car so we're good um <laughs> your foot was in the door at that point yeah i, yeah, I just really wanted the car like for all a while matters. so but that moment when they like brought the car and it had the bow oh, on it and so you walked happy. out and saw it for the first time oh, i was so happy i was living with like um like my step parents at the time too and my stepsister and like she was like like so hype like she's never seen like a, a car like that and she was like re- it was so fun i had a really good time uh okay well anyway <laughs> um so yeah i got the car um shoot i don't remember the first thing i did to it oh the first thing i did to it was like an fi exhaust Ooh. which sounded really good but eh, i don't know i got Voodoo exhaust. Voodoo exhaust. So it sounds so good. It's my favorite yeah. exhaust. I'm obsessed with it. Like literally every time, like someone's like, "Oh, like what should I do to my car?" I'm like, "Get a voodoo, voodoo exhaust." exhaust. We'll yeah. have to clip in a sound of the yes, voodoo exhaust. She turned it on and it did sound bonkers. Let me tell it's you, it's really it good. I mean, the tune helps too. I have like HD tuning tune mm-hmm. and like shoots a little bit of flames. But I don't know. I it's I, a little I, flame like, trend with these R8s, but yeah. <laughs> if you don't know, voodoo exhaust is just made right behind us too. Yep. Yeah. You don't see it over here, but right in the corner. Manufactured here in the states, baby. Voodoo exhaust. But it's just cool too because it's like the stock exhaust is down there yeah and it just like looks boring and i feel like the center exit oh, really like makes it so much more aggressive because yeah. i feel like the r8 except like the new ones but the ones before that they're they kind of have like a sleeper look i guess like before like i did anything to it they're like they're not like a ferrari or lamborghini yeah. like you don't see that and like they don't have like, that oh, appeal so when you cool. look at it and you're just like what the heck yeah exactly at? so i, I have like, that feeling about r8s but <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry buddy well okay. i feel like people who like don't really know cars they just like see it and they're like, oh, like it's cool, but it's not yeah. like they don't think it's like anywhere near like a Lamborghini because it's not as cool. I mean, like right. it's, cl- it's closer than Lamborghini than they think, but it's <laughs> right. closer but, than I mean, they like, know. With the look, sure. no it's not like in your face, like flashy. So I was like, how do I make this look cooler? Yeah. yeah, I wanted it to look like a race car. So like APR didn't have this wing yet. So I was like kind of like on their ass, like, please make a wing for this car. Like I need it. Like I just want a big wing that I can sit on. <laughs> And eat in and out off. You know, I would say, <laughs> have you had in and out off of that wing before? Oh yeah, I eat oh, everything off that wing. Let's go. Half it's it's a good table, and you can sit on it. I've stood on it. It's like the downforce is there. Tell so me. I mean, like, it's not just co- cosmetic. Like the things on the car, like 
they make the car better. Yeah. So I don't know. I love my car a lot. I love everything about it. So. <laughs> and then again, for you guys at home that can't see the car, at least this thing also has like a two tone wrap, like a fade wrap, where literally she's got red in the front and it fades in like the middle to maroon and it gets all the way to the back and it's black. It is insane. What color is it underneath? Black. 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 All black. I just really like black and red, and I like had a fade before this, but um, I didn't. It's really hard to find people who can make a good fade wrap. Because like it, the fade part is really hard to do. Like I was working with someone before this one, trying to do it. We reprinted it like four times, never really got it down. So I was just like, okay, whatever. And then I ended up finding um, SD wraps. They've done like a few like really cool wraps, and like they do like really sick fades. Like you don't even know where that starts fading. No, so no, like no, no, literally, yeah. I was. It, it's I, like fade from front to back. Yeah, exactly. So I got it done there, and I'm like really happy with it because like people can't really do fades well. Like Let unless it's painted. Well. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, com- you adding it's a complex in process. Exactly. Yeah. Literally. How long have you had this wrap on for? Um, I got it maybe like five, six months. Five, six months. Okay. Yeah. I was to say. Because like on average, how long do you think someone should have a wrap on for? More I mean, wraps should be able to last like a while if you're taking care of it and cleaning it. So yeah. I mean, good quality I don't wrap s- film, not, yeah. not leaving in the sun, everything in between. Yeah, exactly. I have like a nose attack on. So like, I feel like that would oh, last like two, three years maybe more to be honest more than that yeah damn that's a long time i mean like typically i feel like you can leave wraps on (laughs) a long time for a wrap (laughs) i mean i i feel like most people shouldn't be unless you're like you know like doing it for instagram like you're getting bored like you don't need to wrap your car every year or two years like i feel like like you could leave it on for like four years and be fine like just take care of it like ceramic it you know it's all about the upkeep and the care. Most people yeah. don't want to do that. Like if They'll you leave it out in the sun, obviously yeah. it's not going to last. Yeah, much that's going to ruin like, it quick. It's going to ruin the paint underneath too. Are you kidding me? Well, at least with black, it not might do terrible. But like if you wrap mine white and just left in the sun, I'll turn that thing. My Z06 would be yellow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like yellow percent. I've seen that. I've seen, it seen that. I've seen it happen. Disgusting. Disgusting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I learned that the hard way actually because I had a like my first wrap was a Tron wrap. It was like mm-hmm. satin black with like red um, lines on the body lines and. I did not take care of it and it started like the sun bleaching was so bad on the top because I would lift, left it outside. I don't know why I left it outside. I was just too lazy to bring it into the garage <laughs> and the wrap really saw that like after a year like it it was done. No, because like with satin especially you can't really get the dirt out once it's like in there. It's, it's in done. there. Yeah. So that was a mistake. So after that I've been like really like I need to clean my car like every week. <laughs> now Tron- you're obsessive about it. Yeah. The it. Tron wraps were huge for a while. Oh yeah. Well I didn't like after it was big i wanted mm. to, i was like my goal was like bring it back mm. i'm like i feel like it looked cool like some people like ended up doing tron wraps again um so you like mini brought it back brought yeah, it back a little bit just a little bit yeah that's fair it's do we cool. need to bring it back again i like it. i don't, I think, I don't think, cool. think so yeah, yeah, I don't, in my I don't, opinion the tron wrap we should bring tron wraps i think back. it's cool i think it depends like i don't really like when it's reflective like at night yeah, that's, that's a little cheesy, but I feel like on some cars, and if you do it tastefully, it can look really good. But what's on tasteful? Some cars. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, what or you is don't have like every some single lines? line on okay. your car being a different color, where it's just like you know, like nice, like you know, like accents, like it yeah. gives an accent. Very light to the accents car. doesn't get yeah. too crazy. Exactly. As long as they're not on beamers, I'm fine with it because I don't think I can handle the beamer cult with their Tron wraps <laughs> and going everything in between. And not not the Porsches either, or Porsches, especially the new ones with it. all their sharp edges they got. Yeah, sharp like edges. a Tron wrap on one of those would be bonkers. Yeah, it wouldn't be great. Is there a reason specifically you chose this platform, the Audi R8? Did you have like, did you grow up loving this platform? I mean, I always just really like this car. Um, I also just really like V10. Sounds really good. Like I'm biased to that. I just feel like it's a really great sounding engine. And within the price range, like that was the car that I liked the most. So it's the most accessible V10 you can find. Yeah, it's a great car and it's like it handles well. I mean, it can do a little bit of everything. You know, like the all wheel drive, like it just, it has everything and it can do everything well. Yeah. Do you ever track it? Yeah. I've tracked it a few times. Nice. How was that experience? <laughs> it's good. I mean, I beat a 720. I mean, driver mod probably, but like. You beat a 720? Yeah. I mean, I don't think he was like the best driver. And was like, it like I, he like bought the car and he got it and he was like, all right, yeah. someone show me how to it's drive It's like he was thing. a good driver, but I feel like, like I had raced the track like a lot and like I have track experience. So like it helped that I knew the line. He wasn't an XGT3 driver <laughs> no absolutely not no we actually Fair. did one of our most recent episodes is we did we sat down with these people called grid partners and they're basically like a company that allows people to get from like if you have zero experience or like all the experience in the world they help you get on the track but oh, they even cool. break down some like very minor modifications that they mainly do to get the car track ready 
Did you have to do anything additional to get the car track ready? Or you literally just as I mean, is ripped it on the track? This isn't a track. Like I didn't have this as a track car. Like I kind of built it to be like a canyon car, like for like daily driving. Like for track, obviously. Like when I was racing, for example, there was a separate car for that, right. and I kind of wanted to get back into it, but it would still be a separate car. Like this is like like a show car that like can still perform. So right. I brought it like this. I mean, I had different tires, different brakes, but otherwise it was just as it is. You and I mean, you, it's still handled well. You kind of want to get back into it? Yeah, I mean, like for fun though, not for like like actually like trying to make money off of it but right. like you know like just like something to build and like do something with right. rather than like building another something project with, yeah to go insane about and yeah, like lose, exactly. lose your mind over <laughs> exactly but like for a reason like not just like building it just to like build it for the street like build it like for a purpose yeah do you have a specific car in mind if you were to get involved because i have a feeling you have like a little in your back i don't know it like mind. depends like i kind of want an s2k because i kind of wanted to get oh. into like drifting <laughs> i respect it I respect it. But yeah, I know. It's, it's very like <laughs> uh like car girl. No, not even that. Car. Just that car specifically. That car just has like a You don't like it? I'm not a huge fan of them. Why? But I just feel like people obsess about the thing. He's thing. not a he's not a huge fan of a lot of things. That's I very mean, true. It's a fun That's car though. Like there's a lot so. you can do to it. <laughs> I hate it. And it's capable. That's fair. And, and it, it revs you know, to what, nine thousand? Does it? I think so. I have no idea. I'm not a JDM guy like that, but I'm pretty sure. Between. I mean, it's a, dude, it's, I've it's been I was like wanting the R thirty four and like the price is insane right now. That is is bonkers. R34 it's like bonkers. insane. You may as well just get like an R33 and put the body kit on it. You might as well. But it's ugh, the R34 is so nice though. But it's like so slow. Like why are you spending this much money? I'm telling you. For That's me, always the question. When things are that much and not actually that fast. It's because there's people that obsess about the things. Well, like, yeah, fast it's all, and that's all that it is. Again, it it's goes all market. Literally, it go, again, it's it marketing. And then again, like a little bit like with the R34 is like a little bit of like supply and demand type thing. So like yeah. you have a finite amount of people that obsess about something, then all of a sudden there's not a lot of the, the supply of it. And the next thing you know, prices shoot up and it goes crazy. Even for something like that, like an R34 that you said is why it's so slow. Why does everyone want it? Yeah. Well, I get why they want it. I mean, like it's now like legal to bring over here and stuff, but it's just like the problem is people are paying that money and it's keeping the price up there. It's creating a market for itself. Yeah. That's literally what it is. Like, it's like, why? It's like not to even equate the damn tube thing, but like the Z06, like these things had markups on them for forever the most ridiculous thing like these cars you could probably get like a simple 1lz build for like 125 130 and you get all that car for that price yeah. but then you start throwing in markups and everything between and the idiots that pay the markups and everything now you're talking about a two hundred thousand dollar car and it throws yeah. it out of the price range that's not a two hundred thousand dollar car that's a yep. hundred thirty thousand dollar car but yeah. it's the same thing with the r34s everyone's still paying them because they're like i don't care i want it send it i want it like you said Put a bow on it and send it to my house. Yeah, but like, how about we just all just together stop buying them at that price and then it'll come down and then people who actually want the car for yep. the car can buy it for a decent price yep. for like what the car is worth. You heard it here first. <laughs> Amber, all the R34 fans that are trying to import from overseas, we're going to get together. No more pay markups, no more high prices. We're going to band together. She's going to set the price point and we're going to make it happen. Yes. <laughs> all the 2014 R8 uh v10 competitions <laughs> stop buying them <laughs> because i want one for like 60k that would be ideal <laughs> we gotta make that happen please. yeah if everyone just stops buying 2014 v10 competitions so i can swoop one up at 60k <laughs> you know i'll He's be i'll be a, i'll be a happy camper He's you obsessed with 2014 kind of yeah mm -hmm. Why? Give me your sales pitch. I want to hear the sales pitch. Why Why are you so obsessed with that specific year, everything in between? Well, that's well, one. So the Gen 1 is just way cheaper to begin with. But in 2014, they changed from the the single clutch to the dual clutch mm. before they redesigned the body. And so my dilemma is like, I, I prefer the Gen 1 outside, but then okay. the Gen 2 inside is obviously like not even close. It's like <laughs> way better. But I just love how the Gen 1... Like, I just love the body lines of the Gen 1 a lot. And then in 15, 14 and 15, it got the dual clutch. So it's like, you kind of have like the new internals in the mm -hmm. old body and that year range. And then I, you don't have to worry about a $20,000 clutch job. That's true. Every yes, two years. That's true. true. Yeah. Little, little background about us too is like when it comes to like talking about like car market and like understanding price points, like we obsess about it. Like he probably texts me every other day and he's like, dude, this car, this price, like this is snag, this is steel. And we're like, oh, why are these cars jump 20K? Like we're obsessive about it. But he definitely wants to get himself into that R8 platform. Yeah. So we're just, just working on it, getting there. That'd be cool. I feel like they're fluctuating a lot though. So it might. Yeah. They're drop. I mean, they've been dropping hot, low key. What are they at right now? I mean, you can get, you can get like a, solid decently low mileage for like 100k what is decently low mileage 
Because I feel like this, I feel like mileage on cars is where everybody starts getting. Well, if you're looking at like a 2014 R8, like 10 to 15, 15k, that's relatively low miles. Yeah. On an R8 2 on Audi, like something like that, that's relatively low miles. Uh, On a dual clutch V10 R8, which is, you know, not going to have too many problems. Yeah. 15k, it's no problem. You're looking at 100 grand, maybe 105. Oh, so they went up. Have you had any problems? You think they went up? From like a couple years ago, yeah. You can get them. You can get them cheaper than that for sure. Like especially the the older ones. The 14 and the 15s have a little bit of a premium. But you can get like a 20k mile V10 R8 if you don't care the year for like 85. Mm, that makes sense. Okay. There's no way people are buying that for 85k. What do you mean? Like people like for in that price point, you're telling me you'd pick that Audi like that V that V10 for that price. I don't know. I don't know what you're asking me. Like the people are really snagging up V10s, 85k instead of buying like C7 Z06s and going crazy on that. Yeah, that's. I don't know. That's not for me. I can't do it. You'd rather have a C7. I would if for 85k, even because I don't even need the 85k. I can get it for 70. I can get it for 68. But I would take a C7 Z06, 650 torque, 650 horsepower, all day over any V10 85k. Let's no hear taste. it, Amber. Let's hear it. Come on, come no on. Taste. Let's hear it. Let's hear I it. mean, I don't, I don't have anything to say. Are you like an American car guy? I mean, honestly, I wouldn't say like I'm, I grew up. My, my, He's a Corvette my family guy. Grew He's up, a like, my, guy. My old man is like Corvette fanatic and everything in between. So like I kind of grew up tailored towards that. But it's just when you go into the wide spectrum of things, when you talk about for the for, – it all comes down to like for the price. For the price. Yeah. That's I don't want to say out here like Corvette's like the greatest thing in the world because by no means is it. But – for the price, like people don't, under, don't understand what a C7 Z06 is. Like people who understand torque and the way a car drives, for seventy thousand dollars, you can get six fifty torque. And if you do a couple modifications, you're already in the seven hundreds. Like I promise you, that car is ridiculous. Because like for example, you buy an eighty five K V10. How much money do you get to dump into it to get it to cranking? Like I don't even know what ta- what kind of what kind of measurement we're we gonna use. Zero to sixty time. We're gonna do it doesn't track times. It's like a natural mile time. time. It's it's not about. It's not know. even about that. I don't know, man. But I mean, like you can argue all you want about like, oh, this makes this much horsepower and it goes this fast and blah blah blah. Like I feel like not everybody cares about that. I feel no. like the people who are over here spending eighty five k on an R V ten R eight is more for the fact that it's a V ten R eight and it's what 100%. it is rather than you know some people just don't want to get an American car. Some so it's a love don't for the car then. Yeah. Not yeah. the value that you can get for the I same want a price, V10. But. Can That's I fair. get a faster car than a V10 R8 at the price? 100%. Well, because look. Cause I give me this whole episode. V10. I'm going to be thinking in the back of my head. If yeah, I if I find it, something, if we if we change topics and I just shout out, out a car, it's because I thought about it. But I'm going to I'm gonna give you that one. Yeah, but look, because then like if we're just, if you're going to have like that argument, then you can be like, okay, well, then you can buy like a $5,000 Honda Civic okay, and then put yes, yes, $10,000 yes. into yes. it and yes. then you're faster than a f- Lamborghini. Like, that's fair. Like, uh, that's, it's probably like, more that's like, like 40 the argument. grand, but yeah, I, we're get, gonna, I get what you're okay, saying. Okay, but we're, still, like you're spending way less than both fair. the cars that we that's mentioned. Fair. So that's it's like fair. We're going to get the 996 downpipe and tune people in the chat talking about what they can do for 70 grand. cup car in the world. 100%, yeah. Give me a nine nine. Give me a nine nine six downpipe in a tune. I'm gonna be pushing seven thousand horsepower <laughs> with a seventy yeah. k budget. Yeah, pretty much. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, like, there's just like so many ways you can argue. I feel like when people are buying a car, it's not always just like what the car can do. It's just like you like the car. That's yes. fair. And like, there's always ways around like getting to what you want the car to do, and everything can be equal to an extent. It's just different price ranges. I feel like people, so much people get stuck on like, again, it all depends like what your purpose is of buying the car, like what you grow up with liking. Like so many people get so fixated in what like other people think about their car and Mm -hmm. like care and stuff like that. Like whatever you like, like just buy what you love and do what you want to do. How does the car make you feel? How does the car, exactly. How does does the car make you feel? Literally. How does the car make you feel? I say that every other episode. You really do. Because we get this whole thing, we talk about like Porsche versus like Lambo. Some, something very basic, very drastic. But the two of them, like driver experience, again, like he says, how does the car make you feel? Would you pick, if we had, a, if I told you, you can either drive, not track, just have and just drive on a day-to-day basis. I want to pick this one right. 992 Turbo S or 640 Evo. 644 Evo. Turbo. Amber, I thought we had something going. I really did. I thought we were vibing. I thought it was going to be a good episode. Oh, my gosh. You got to explain the reason why you picked the turbo. 
I mean, honestly, I just really like that car. It's dailyable. That's that's the only reason why you pick up the Huracan's not dailyable. Not as much. Not that's as much. I that I'll, I'll give that point. Yeah, to definitely her. Not, not as, as much. much. I one hundred percent agree with you. Yeah, yeah. But getting in the Turbo S, turning it on, and then going for a drive versus getting the Lambo, turning it on, and going for a drive. You're telling me you're picking that Turbo S? Yeah. Damn. I don't know. I don't know. I, just, I have a thing with Lambo though that is just like great car. Obviously, I buy the I drive the cheap version of it, <laughs> but like I don't know, just the. Fan base and like the people that's that fair. buy the car that's really turn me off. That's fair. From that's completely fair. The car. I mean, if it's like you know, like a Veneno, like that's I'll go that's Lambo. Different. Yeah, but like, oh, that's different. That's different. Well, that's just know. a different body to Ventura, or, or is it not? It is. Yeah. It, is. Yeah. it is. But it's just like it's just, it's just <laughs> the fact that it has like the hypercar name to it that right. it's like it's fine because but it like, looks not crazy. everyone has it, that. It looks crazy. But I don't know. It's just just like everything surrounding that car now. It's like very influencer and like I don't know. But there's a there's a reason, right? There has to but, be a little bit of a reason. He he's also a very Lambo guy. Yeah, like we're both Lambo bros, like very much. Not like in the personality sense, like, but definitely like in general. Yeah, yeah. Of the car I'm way more of a like chill that. chill Lambo bro. Yeah, like exactly. I grew up with Lambo posters. Like Lambo was was the dream. Yeah. So the guy yeah. art on the Murciago just like spoke to me at a young age, and like I just stamped my heart with a bull, and that's just kind of how it's been. No, since. I get it. I need to get into a Lambo. I grew up like loving Lambo too. Because we talk about this all the time, like we're Lambros, but like literally, I like I have a you drive a Ferrari. I, I, what I, you I, that's what I'm saying. I'm a, I'm a traitor to, the, to my own kind. This is ridiculous. Yeah, we'll, we'll make that's that happen surprising. next week. Is it F Ferrari over Lambo? To be honest with you, I if I could still, I would get rid of my four five eight and get a Lambo. But if I had to pick now which brand I like more, and I don't think I've said this to Gavin yet, is I would probably pick the Ferrari brand. Over no, Lamborghini. get out of here. I'm being so serious. Yeah, and maybe honestly, I think it really is the four five eight. Have you have you ever had the opportunity to drive one of those things? I have like the four five. I had a four eight eight. How'd you like that? Because I'm actually thinking it that was kind of where I'm thinking about maybe jumping to. I think driving wise, the four five eight is a lot more fun and responsive. Um, I'm not huge on turbos. Same. So, especially especially Ferrari because now Ferrari yeah. everything's turbo muffled everything yeah. is like not so lag. it's like it's a it's a beautiful car don't get me wrong I love Ferrari but I feel like the driving experience isn't there compared to on the 488 yeah on that one specifically yes okay. compared okay. to the, the 458 five, might yeah. be the most ridiculous driving experience car think so I I do I really like that car. It's like the most, like you take all of Ferrari's engineering and everything they put into the way that they design cars, combine it with that 9,000 RPM, like V8. Like this, this thing behind me is literally just a re-engineered American version of that car. And you're talking about from 2010 to 2014, they're building things. I mean, right. I will say that 458 on Angela's crest feels different. buttery. I'm telling you, man, it's different. It's, it's different. nice. It's a nice it makes yeah. for a nice morning, for sure. Have you ever got the opportunity to rip this thing in the Angeles Crest up there in like the oh, north yeah. of LA? I love it. It's fun. But I don't know. I feel like I've had more fun in canyons in Malibu. Really? Because they're tighter or what? Tighter and like no cops. That's true, yeah. Because there's no one even up there. But I feel like there. Angeles Crest, the cops only sit at the bottom. Once mm. you well, you, you started get, going everywhere. You do get you get some S two thousands that are taking corners too dang fast oh, up there in Angeles Crest. Whereas uh -huh. in Malibu you don't get that. Yeah. That's what you do get. Or some 370Zs. Some 370Zs. That are like this this far off yep. the ground. Some 3 Series <laughs> you know, going absolutely crazy. Like they're literally, just, the wheel's about to just bolt off. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. I mean, it's fair. There's been enough people probably just go off the side of the mountain that they've got a sense of people up there. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like the Malibu Canyons, are, they're fun. They're more like niche, I guess. But um, I don't know. Like going back to the 488, I feel like it was just very squirrely. Really? I don't really like that. Like very like heavy in the back. Mm. didn't really enjoy that you feel like it didn't put its power down properly no i mean there's like that lag too when you're trying to get the power in and it just like great car but i think there's better elsewhere for that price point let's say i think right now 48 are like 250 let's just do this 250 to like 280 i don't know how well you know that price point like current day no i don't know maybe should we just rip her some like huracan 720s 488 F12, Berlina. Um, oh. Seven, I mean, you said that's 720s. That's a hard one. It is, right? That's a, that's a really hard. You, like Turbo S's creep up in there. Artura. G, Art, don't even throw no. the Artura in there. Don't throw the Artura in that there. Doesn't, this is, <laughs> You're going to buy the Artura for 240. You're going to drive it off the parking lot, and it's going to be at 160. Like and then it's going to blow up in like a week. <laughs> exactly, yeah. We don't, we don't touch in the Artura. Yeah. Is that what's happening to the Arturos? 
They got it's kind of like the GTs. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. They got. Re I didn't know that they got recalled. They got a recall because they're blowing up. Bad. And I got bad people move. trying to convince me to buy a 720s. McLaren, crazy. I'm not McLaren that loves catching the fire. 720s different. Is okay, it so 720. I just think McLaren Hercon. generally is not going. You're not going to buy that car like thinking that it's going to last. That's like fair. you need to like be up on like taking care of it. Like it's a car that can do well. You just have to really be on it. Don't just wait to like oh sh shoot something's wrong. Like yeah. you have to be an adult. Be on it. You have to be don't a, a don't responsible adult. Don't, <laughs> yeah. don't buy an car. eight owner five seventy. Do not please. <laughs> like, be, that's a bad move. <laughs> I feel like they're capable. If you like really stay on taking care of the car, I think it's great. But I mean, a lot of people they just kind of like with other cars they wait till like the light comes on before they're like oh something's wrong with the car like. Don't do that with a McLaren. Would you say McLaren's like your favorite like driving experience car? No. I don't know. They're, I can't don't have like a favorite driving experience car because like they're all different. That's true. Like I mean like I've driven like a like a Koenigsegg and that's like such a great experience but then like it's not going to do what something else can do. It's it that's a really hard question. Everything is relative. Yeah. What Koenigsegg did you drive? A uh, Gera RS. How was that? It was really fun. Really, it was scary because I didn't want to scratch it. There it is. Because um, it almost like takes you out of that world. Like you're thinking about like the dollar figure. That's oh yeah. Related to the car. The whole time driving it, I'm like, don't fuck up, don't fuck up, don't fuck up, <laughs> because I'll, I'll be in debt for the rest of my life. Like <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, it's it's a fun car. I mean, I drove the um, Pagani Wyra too. That was really fun. A lot scarier. Um, Why was it scarier? price point because even more so than yeah the it just like the pagani feels very like fragile dainty compared to the konex like like the konex like it drives like a car that wants to be driven so okay. like sometimes like you'll be driving and you kind of forget that it's really expensive yeah. yeah but like the pagani like it feels like scary to drive I feel like this is a good topic because like Literally. how often do you hear people talking about what yeah. a konex egg and a pagani feels like driving because most of these owners aren't like Making videos or yeah, online. No, oh, yeah, most, yeah, stuff. most owners are not going to show their face. And then yeah. again, too, I feel like this world that like we're blessed to be able to like operate within, it takes away like how crazy the experience really is to drive something like that. And like 99.9% .9 of the people will literally never even touch that barrier. And like you've had the opportunity to drive multiple and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky to have been able to do that. Absolutely. So, and Oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, that wasn't even going to say anything else. I just say and as like an ending thing for some reason. So what was a little like, what was a little wild about the Pagani? Like, because obviously the the kid in Dallas, he, you know, totaled the car up allegedly going like 30 miles per hour on a turn. So uh, it can get out from under you, apparently. <laughs> Is that like just the feeling you were getting? Like it just, you felt like you might not be able to control the car or what? Yeah, I just feel like at least what I got from it is that it just like isn't a trustworthy car, I guess. I don't really know how to word that right, but it's like, the car kind of has a mind of its own and you kind of have to like be on top of it to make sure that it's listening to you because it just has so much power and it's really light and I mean it's it's a Pagani. I feel like at the end of the day it's more of like an art piece it rather is. than like something like you're going to have an amazing time driving. But I mean it, it's a scary car to drive in my opinion. It's like you're driving a fighter jet like literally the way <laughs> all the gauges are everything in between. But then the Koenig was just dialed huh? It's dialed. I mean it, it's really planted to the ground. I mean the Pagani was too. I, di I didn't obviously I didn't drive them like to their full potential. I wasn't like tracking it. I just kind of drove it around down here but i feel like the konex i just like it felt better to drive i was more comfortable in it um i don't know they're just they're different yeah so was there anything i don't know if i want to say underwhelming or like disappointing in driving the hypercar like did you get in and was there any disappointment aspect at all i mean or no. was it literally everything you imagine it was and lived up to i mean it was it was what I imagined it to be for it sure. It was. Yeah, I mean it was a, it was an awesome experience. I mean they're fast, the throttle response is great. I had like it's it's a good time. The the I the only car I think that I've ever like had higher hopes for than what it was was like a Bugatti. Talk about that experience. What Bugatti did you drive? Uh, a Veyron. A Veyron. Veyron. And it just heavy. Real just heavy. heavy. It's like a Rolls Royce with yeah. more power. Is it smooth? Smooth. Yeah, but Smooth it just like heavy. it was it was underwhelming to me. I mean, it's still like a really sick car, but I feel like it like I when I was younger, like I always really liked Bugattis. Like it was like my favorite car for some reason. I don't know why. They're beautiful. But they're beautiful. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah, my dream car is a Bugatti. Like I was like in middle school, like I want a Bugatti. Like everyone's like, what is that? <laughs> um, but I think I overhyped it so much in my head that the, when I finally got to drive it, I was like, oh, because like, you know, like they're like the fastest car right. in the world. So then like in my head, I'm like, oh, so it's going to go zero to 60 and like 
the right <laughs> but yeah it doesn't it's more about that highway pool huh yeah i feel like again even the zero sixty times like there's only so much you can do within that range like think about it, like we were talking about the triple s like the triple s does what zero sixty Two point six. Two point six, two point five or something. I think like that. I like I think they've I'm tested sure all the way to two point two. Oh, hundred. Right? That's what I'm saying. To like, sixty. Yeah. But yet would you take a turbo S or Bugatti? <laughs> well, <laughs> but yet you'll have all the all the all the warriors in the comments talking about zero to sixty time. They're like, if my I had, Turbo S will be a Bugatti. I feel like if I had all the money in the world, I would have a Veyron just to like cruise in. Well, I feel like that would be silly to compare a car at these obviously, levels. Obviously, but again, the internet is a is a power of its own. So the internet they, is a crazy. The place. internet is crazy. They yeah, want like, they want to throw the turbo S against everything. Anything. anything. Okay, yeah. right. But like you're 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 given the keys to both. You can keep it. I mean, if you're using your brain, and even if you don't like the Bugatti, you can just sell it. Ever, I would love to. I would love to clip this because I would love to clip this. If you could get the keys to either a nine nine two Turbo S or a, a, what, like Bugatti Veyron Basic, or even like a basic, or like Bugatti, a Chiron or like whatever. A, no, 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 not even a Chiron. I don't want to give them too. I don't want to give it too high of an echelon. 992 Turbo S or Bugatti Veyron, what would you pick? I want to clip that up. I guarantee there will be a multitude of people in the comments taking the Turbo S. I guarantee <laughs> but it's you. Like, but it's like the price. Like, fine, you can like the Turbo S better, whatever. Faster zero to 60. But, like, take the Bugatti keys, sell it, go sell buy it. another go buy Turbo four. S. No. Ember, exactly. I'm on your team. I'm <laughs> yeah. on the same I team as you. I just think it's crazy. What if you I can't sell it? What if you can't sell it? You have to keep the car. You still pick Bugatti? Net worth. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. She's dialed. She's got yeah. it very dialed in. I mean, I'm a, you, we're on the go, same team, I promise you. You go to a business meeting trying to like pitch like a business idea and you pull up in the Bugatti, they're going to be like, they know what they're They didn't want to hear it. They're like, yeah. yep, we're good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, like, at the end of the day, four turbos spool up. <laughs> like, at the end <laughs> of the day, like, it's, it's, it's like a level. So yeah. it's like, it's, the only reason I'm making a big deal about it is because no, I, I promise you, like, I literally, like, again, I can't wait till this comes out because I promise you the amount, the people that will comment, so, like, somebody will come out of the woodworks and be like, well, I mean, my Turbo S won't break down on me or, or some, some, they'll, they'll do something like that. And like, I promise My Turbo you, S doesn't have a $30,000 oil change. Yeah, I can fit golf clubs in my Turbo yeah. S. Like, I promise you somebody will come out of the woodworks. That's oh, the only reason I'm making a bigger deal about it. Yeah, but yeah. I feel like sometimes I just do that just to, like get the rise out just to rile them up a little bit yeah like, because like, I'm, like i like i can't imagine in their head like they like really are like that's the better option oh they think so i, I they've I, been convinced I, mean, again, I don't know i just but, i just like i just i just don't understand it's porsche right it's, it's the brand like it's it's the moniker that has brainwashed and i say this a million times that has brainwashed some of these people to think that the car is like literally like the the best of the best when like you said every single car has its angle it has it yeah. what it excels in, but like Porsche, and I'm saying Porsche because I've gotten reamed for just saying Porsche, but I it's Porsche. They, it's Porsche. It's Porsche, whatever. <laughs> but they literally have it's like, Volkswagen. It's, it's literally exactly like they're glorified Volkswagens. But it gets to a point where people think like the car is literally like all around like the number one thing. And I'm not even just trying to say the Turbo S, like like in, the three RS, the, the new nine nine two three RS. Sure, slow yeah. car. Yeah. It is a slow car. <laughs> it is according to Cosm, it's a slow car. <laughs> Well, like sure, I mean, zero fast. to sixty, it's not like no. highway pools. It's not going to be fast. Yeah, it's a track well, it's car. It's a track car. It's a track car. It is supposed to take turns. It's supposed to handle well. It's what supposed to be planted. What percent of them are taking it to the track? Like ten. Well, I mean, 10%? with how popular it is, like none. No. Yeah. Because like everyone is buying it because it's the new nine nine two GT three RS, and I mean, it looks amazing because like finally, like it Porsche actually amazing. like decided to like kind of go out of like go what crazy. they've been doing and make it like look more like supercar y um is it a supercar no do you you, you answer before i even finish <laughs> <Hey>, she knew it was <laughs> she, coming I she's gotten this before she, she knew it was coming why do you say it's not a supercar i agree with you so i'm I mean, saying that it's it, it's kind of hard to say because like what is a supercar i feel like it, it it's not just like question. like see people are like oh well, like this car is like faster than a supercar this car like whatever i feel like it's more just like supercar is just like the whole car around it like it has to like be um What's the word? Like exotic. It has to like look exotic. It has to feel exotic. Everything about it needs to be like exotic. Whereas like the three RS is a beautiful car, a great track car, but I wouldn't say like you drive it and you feel like you're driving an exotic. You want a funny story? I would love a funny story. This, you're gonna love this. Doubt you're up. gonna hate this. I would love it. So I was walking, I was walking with Meg earlier, and I was like, Yeah, so tomorrow me and Joe are going on this uh supercar drive. Um it's like supercars only. And I was like, so I'm gonna go and drop off the four C and jump in the Ferrari. And she goes, oh, then what's Joe driving? And I was like, the Z06. And she goes, that's a supercar? <laughs> is it a supercar? 
I say yes. You say yes? It's got the most powerful naturally aspirated V8 ever created mounted behind the seats. How is it not? But it's an American car. But I mean... How do you feel about it? Do you know a lot about these things? I feel like people like don't care about them. So nobody I mean, really I know a decent them. amount about it. I mean, like at the end of the day, like I'm not really like an American like fangirl. I, I can like... I'm an American fangirl, so <laughs> <laughs> dial it up. But is it a supercar? <laughs> I mean, look, like I can respect. You won't offend just them. Just say it. No, no, no. You, I don't, I don't, you will offend me and it's fine. But <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think it's the same with the 3 RS. I think they're very borderline. Okay. Like I think they're right there. Like I feel like if there's a supercar drive, those cars should be allowed on the drive. But I wouldn't like say like that it's car. necessarily a supercar. <laughs> I'd say it's just like borderline. Like it's up to debate. So what, what would it be? A sports car? Like it's like a it's like a higher it's like right in between i think it's is it a four five eight a supercar so we need a, a new category we well, do i mean the fact that it's a ferrari though i feel like makes that a supercar so the moniker makes the supercar well ferrari only makes supercars yeah lamborghini only makes supercars, supercars kind of the california is debatable i would say the california, the california is, is not a fucking supercar the california I yeah the, I, w I wouldn't call it a supercar no, letting I, letting that 09 california and a supercar row at oc cars and coffee was pretty wild that was one of the most disrespectful things that's ever happened to me in my life today that day that and then the red miss is six i don't even want to get it. now it's now we're <laughs> oh, done goodness about we had we, he's, we had he snuck in he snuck in yeah it's fine whatever, whatever. i don't know i feel like supercar is very loosely thrown around i think it's hard like a lot of people like i've had people even like say my car is not a supercar I just feel That's like wild. it just, <laughs> it really just like depends. I feel like no one, like if you like Google, like what a supercar is, it doesn't really tell you much. There is no like definition for it. Like goes into that. It used to be so easy. It was like, you have the 458 and the Gallardo and the, or the 430 and the Gallardo. Yeah. And that's it. Yep. Those are the supercars. And then you're, what is What's the McLaren? And then, that and then Audi of? came in. There, there wasn't even, I'm, I'm talking before that. Before what's the, what's the McLaren that has like, it's the 12C? Like, that one, mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, the MP4 12C. MP4 12C. Out, I like, would say MP12 5C. Like, I don't even know. That, like, when did that come out? 11, 12? Yeah, right around there. Yeah. But yeah, then you added that in. You have the R8. But now it's like everyone wants to make a supercar. You got Acura being like, hey, we've got a V6 supercar. That's not a supercar. <laughs> the NSX. You're counting that as a supercar? I don't know. Nah, bro. If, no. no, no, no. The NSX is not a supercar. All right, no, no. Well, I feel like, the, like with supercars, it, it's a lot about brand too, though. Yeah. Like, are there, like, there's not, like, Japanese supercars isn't really, like, a thing. No, not it's at like, all. No. It's like a Euro the LFA? European thing. Still doesn't I mean, even really look like a supercar. It doesn't look it like doesn't. a supercar. I mean, I guess it, it, it would be up there, but it's like, I don't know, like, like there's a debate between, like, if GTRs are a supercar. No, no, there's not. no way. Who's having that debate? A lot of people. Really? Yeah. Because I have it's not like, been, it's like I have been blessed Nissan. to join that debate. <laughs> I, would, I would love to get the opportunity to join that It's like the top Nissan one. car, you know? Like, people like to try to throw in, like, the top of the line car of, like, all brands to be the supercar. Like, for example, like, Beamer doesn't have a supercar, but then they're all like, oh, well, like, the M5 CS is faster than a supercar. No, like, uh, that's not that's not all that goes into it. You think it, it would be like. sick if they did make a supercar? Beamer? Yeah. They had the opportunity to do it. Yeah, they did. And, then and they, they didn't the do it. They came out with this freaking, I, I'm, 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 they got me riled up again. This damn M8, this is some crap. I don't know what the She's heck. talking they, about the I8. Oh, the, the I8. I8. Oh, that's even bigger crap. That, that's they yeah. literally crap. had, the, like, the, the look of it, like, they had it. Like, they could have just made, like, the coolest, yep. like, BMW, and they they're like, could've. let's just make this, like, really slow. Right. I don't know why they did it. I don't know why they did All it. All they had to do was put in, like, a V8 or a twin turbo V8. A V10 would have been awesome. Would have been awesome, yeah. Yeah, literally. And they I just mean, were just they just decided not to. I'm so not a fan of the I8. My girlfriend was um talking to this guy. Like they were like seeing each other. And red flag. Yeah. If you had an R, even an I8, red flag. No, we had an I8, but the thing is she hid it from me because she knew I was going to I, I was it was it, it was it wrapped too? Was it a wrapped R8? It was R8? wrapped and it had starlights. Oh. It. oh my goodness. How long ago was this? Like that's a couple really months ago. A couple months ago? Yeah, because she knows that I'm really into cars. <laughs> starlight so she, like, I8. today driving an I8? Yeah. With a no. starlight with headliner. Starlight. She was like, so like finally, horses. like they were like talking for a little bit. And then she was like, oh, like, by the way, he like drives an I8. Like, that's not a cool car, right? I'm she like, tried to slide that by no. you? No. And then <laughs> after like, they no, broke no, up, no, she's no. like, this is something I really, I was like hiding from you the whole time. But now that we broke up, like, I'm going to tell you. He had starlights in it too. Oh, no, I died. That's bonkers. That's wild. Horrible. Starlights in an I8. Do you know what he did by chance? I'm just genuinely curious. Yeah, he was curious. an OnlyFans manager. That, that adds might, up. That might, yeah, that, I think that, that, that makes that, so much That build sheet that is makes so much perfect. sense. It's, it, 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 it fits. <laughs> it but fits the rest of it. was just like one thing after the other there, with her. There's and literally I was like, not dude, a better answer. On? There's not a more perfect mm -mm. fit. There's not a more perfect fit. She could have said. I'm trying to think for an OnlyFans manager, what would be a better car? I think that might be it. That's perfect. An I8 with a Starlight head, head That might be it. Headliner? Yep. Wrapped with some some wheels or something. I don't know. Huracan. 
Are Huracans for OF managers? I feel like the Huracans for cloudy people. Cloudy people. I feel like for and me, I feel like OF managers have like a lot of them, not all of them, like have like that like inflated like yeah they ego. think they're like dons so, or something like that I'm yeah, like, exactly no, you don't do anything yeah if you could if you, could, if you could take any huracan model right now what would you take any huracan model yeah that's a really good question because i would go with a vf supercharged peppermonte oh we can add VF yeah, yeah, supercharged. you can, you can if you want to okay, no, well, can we that start count. no you have to do a stock that's one. what i'm saying stock stock because that's that's not fair of course i'm picking a vf supercharged Peppermonte. yeah <laughs> why am i not allowed to do shout that? out constantine okay but. so i take a Peppermonte and then i'd go and buy a vf supercharger <laughs> <laughs> i hate you i hate you so much i would honestly right now i would take an sto i was gonna say that too i would take an sto i would i want i, I want to take the sto but the fact that there's literally no no frunk See, there's literally nothing. The reason why I respect your answer, you can live with it without a frunk trust. I promise you, if you have an STO, you'll find a way to live with it. I promise you. There's no need for a frunk when you have an STO. Okay, so a VF supercharged STO? <laughs> <laughs> no. Sure. My, my what about you? What, what model of Huracan? Do you, is that even a pick? Okay. I almost got one, but my allocation was too late. Mm. So what do you amazing. have right now? Do you? Is it just this? Yeah, it's just this. What have you had? Uh, I've had like a couple Mercedes and the 488. And I had a 335 that I was turning into a drift car, but it blew up on me, so I gave up. Mm. <laughs> Is there any future plans for something? Or are you just kind of... I mean, yeah, like I want to get like a track car. I want to build a track car. Um, I want to... Or or a drift car, one or the other. I want to either get back into something that I know or something new. Um, that's like my main plans. It's like I like sometimes I'll like think about like getting something else, like another supercar or something. But like within the price range that like my car is in right now, I just like can't think of anything better. That's very true. It's kind of yeah. like, again, price range gets so, so important. Time. Again, mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah. I can it's make arguments relative. for cars that are different. I don't yeah. want to say better, better, but different. Yeah. But like price point gets so stuck because even like, like I'm trying to think of like, when you get into this, like what would you price this at? What When you say your price range, what are you throwing at? Just like so I kind of know where to mentally gauge. That's like 200 a, under. That's a tough range. Yeah. You, you don't have a lot of options. It's like, it's like 570S. McLaren GT. McLaren GT, which I'm not touching. Or an R8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an R8. You want to? We can get you can get some you can get something like this. Yeah, yeah. But, I, mean, I don't think there's any interest so. in that. No, no, no interest. I mean, in that. I, I like the car. I just like I'm very. I just Euro is like my thing. Like I really like like the car that I want to build to like do like drifting or like tracking with. Like I really want a JDM car. Really, I really well they're they're easy I feel to like work they're the on. Best ones, yeah, probably for that too. So it's like something that I can do myself. Like working on this is such a pain. Like I just did an oil change here, <laughs> and like there's so many plugs. It's they make just, it complicated. They do because they want you to take it. They there. want you to take it to the dealer. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to be able to work on the dang things, and especially they want you, the new ones. They yeah. want you to be like, look how complex it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, I it's a race my car. I need forty five hundred like, for my change. intakes in this too, and it's just like, it's uh, they make like the easiest things complicated, and it's like I like working on my car, and like obviously there's not much that I need to do to this car. Like the only thing it needs is like what like a supercharger, or, like turbo, but mechanic. Yep, to, but like to like be able to have like a car to work on i feel like jdm just like very easy to work no 100 or it's even like, something like old school that's a lot but i feel more like american too america i'm telling you yeah like old. i was i like kind of like have like this weird thing where i'm like really into like um the zl1 does it i love the zl1 yeah, the see amber now so, we're talking yes the front end is really nice okay so besides the front end what else do you like about the car it's fast. It sounds nice. Do you know that this that ZL1 has the same engine that the C7 Z06 has? Yeah. And it's literally the Z7 Z06 is lighter because you imagine that car. Yeah. She's like, I hate you. <laughs> She's like, have you, the have you happened to ever drive a C7 Z06? I'm obsessed with that mm -mm. car. I'm obsessed with that car. The C7 Z06 rips. I promise you, it rips. It so rips. I promise you, anybody at home that's sitting there with. 80 grand and it's like i want to make the most out of it i promise you and sam's laughing at me right now i promise you that there's nothing better out there for 80 grand i promise you buy it for 66 dump another 15 into it 14 into it i promise you have an 800 horsepower monster on your hands i promise you and he says beamer fanboys are bad i know i'm terrible i might be worse i'm i i am the problem i promise you i am the problem but there, I don't know. With them, when it comes to be every fanboy is a problem. That's that's what it comes down to. Be like me and don't be a fanboy and just enjoy cars for what they and are. People will like you. No, see, that, Mister, that's I fair. have a bull on my heart. Oh, well, that's that's different. <laughs> <laughs> that's different. No. But you won't find me in the comment sections. Oh, you'll find me in the comment. I'm deep in the comment section. I'll be in the I'm comment section there. only when like people are like saying, "All right, it's 
are like bad cars. I think they're it's a great car. It's a great all around car. It's amazing. But like I oh my gosh, I there was like this one podcast I was like scrolling through reels and there was like this like one podcast that like really pissed me off. I don't even remember what it was, but this guy was like saying like, "Oh yeah, I drove like all these cars and like I really didn't like the R8." And then I I don't even remember what he was saying oh, exactly, I think but I know he was like comparing about. he was like comparing it to like cars that like you wouldn't typically compare it to and he was saying that it was so bad and I was like, "Look, you can't <laughs> You can't talk about a car being bad when you're driving it red light to red light. And That's then, it. oh my gosh, he blocked me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't know. I just like, like, just like, don't say stupid things. Like, you can have an opinion, but it's like, back it with something. I wish I remembered exactly what he said. So, like, this would make more sense. And I'm not just like speaking into the void, but like, it was like a while ago and it pissed me off. See, I've got a bull on my heart because I love Lambo, but I'm not going to go out there and tell anyone that Lambo's like, the best yeah i know it's not necessarily the best it's the best to me it's my favorite but i'm not like the i'm not i'm not the that sort of fanboy like well, the lambos are great cars the porsche fanboys that come like in awesome cars it's yeah. just like what surrounds them i feel like a lot of like like the rappers kind of ruined it they did an la scene too yeah like and like they're all rentals and it's just like i feel like that just like it because they don't break Yep, it's that's true. Just, easiest just, car to rent. Or cool, easy, cool, easiest, bulletproof. Easiest supercar. But I feel like it just kind of made like the Huracans like a little trashy. I mean, like I hate like throwing that word out there, but like the brand behind it now, like it's not like upper class, you know, like you don't like see a Lambo and you're like, oh, like, you know. You Unless think, it's a perf. No, no. I mean, maybe the perf sure. interior, the perf interior. Have you been, have you seen the perf Monte interior? Yeah. If it's all, like, if, if it's, it's all, all Alcantara with forged carbon five. In, oh my God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. But, like, I will attest to it, like, especially in L.A. I feel like, again, to set it, Navarro Motorsports, we're here in deep o OC. This is kind of where you hang out, Orange County more so, would you say? Yeah, I moved down here. So. The scenes are completely different. They are. So, like, Lam Lam Lambo up there in L.A., you have a totally specific type of person that gets out of that yeah. car. And the way that they walk, they talk, the way that they present themselves. Versus I feel like even down here, it's not as drastic. Oh, definitely not. Just in LA, like the 90% 90, 90 of the Lambos you see, they're like rented and you're like, oh my God. Or maybe they have four or five guys splitting the payments on them or uh -huh. something like that. I think there was somebody on the internet talking about that one. I, I yeah, know. I, I saw that one. You I saw was, that one? Yeah, I saw that one. I was like, you want the car that bad that you're going to split it? I mean, I couldn't even imagine the arguments between that. Like, bro, I need it this weekend. No, bro, I have a date this weekend. Like, oh my gosh, I couldn't you, imagine. Could you imagine four people? Four or five people. Yeah. You. And but people I don't, don't even know that that's a thing. Yeah. It's insane. And they want to act like it's not a thing. They, they want to tell us. They want to tell us. No, you're like you're just you're just you're making not. things up. You're making cloud. <laughs> no, yeah. it's a, it's a real thing. There's people out there splitting Lambos. Yeah, maybe you. that's my thing though. Maybe it's just because like I've been in LA so like I lived in up. LA for so long. I grew up there, so it's just like Lambos kind of like got ruined for me because of like everything behind it, and it's just like annoying because like there'll be guys who be like they like pull up in their rented Lambo and they like think they're like so much better than you, and then they like see my car and I'm like oh yeah I own it and they're like oh okay and it'll probably walk it. Yeah. yeah. What is this thing pushing right now? I don't know. I haven't thrown it on a dyno, so I don't want to like throw out random numbers. No, no, throw out random numbers. I promise no, you. No, no one will take anything to heart, I, and no, no one not, will come I don't, at I don't, you. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, I, I, I don't even have an idea. It's pretty fast. I can imagine you got this thing kicking. If for what you have on it, and imagine just even the tune, it's got to be kicking something. I mean, crazy. like the only thing is, like you know, there's a lot of downforce, which kind of like brings a lot of drag when I'm going quick. But I just like I want to throw it on a dyno, and I want to have those numbers so that like when I say numbers, like it makes sense, and I don't want to just like guess and then like make myself feel bad if it's not that or like whatever. So like I don't know. I just I need a dyno in my car. But I mean, like it's a lot lighter than it was when I got it. You know, I have mods on it. I have a tune. Like. I feel yeah, like this is the best platform to modify too. Kind of like what you were testing too. Like this is it's the like best a blank canvas. Bang. It is literally yeah. the best bang for your buck. Like this thing, you can't even do anything. They haven't even broken the ECUs on this thing. Or if anybody's broken the ECU on this thing, please let me know ASAP. Because as far as I'm concerned, I don't know anybody that's broken this ACU. ECU. Ah, well, it's new. So. Relatively new, yeah. Yeah. I gotta ask you one thing, and please don't hate me for asking this. I might. But <laughs> like being being a female in the car world, and especially like a creator and everything. Um, like what is that experience like? Uh, I mean, cause I mean, we've sat down, I you've been, it. you've been, I love it. You've been talking shop for better than the past, 90 percent guys will the past hour. No Easy. problems. You know, everything. So I like, just like talking shit. <laughs> Welcome to the club. baby. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. Um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's like a lot of like great things about it and there's a lot of like really shitty things about it. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've just been in it long enough to like know what to 
ignore and like what to not ignore but i don't know like i feel like being a girl like, sometimes you know like it makes it easier because like a lot of people are like oh like you get things handed to you because you're a girl and like i wouldn't say that that's necessarily true but like i think like it helps sure but um i feel like there's just like a lot of hate that comes with it like a lot of guys like just they like no matter what you tell them like there's always something wrong like i'll get comments like oh you didn't get the car yourself i tell them or they're like oh it's your dad's car i'm like my i don't have a dad and then they're like oh well your sugar daddy i'm like i don't have a sugar daddy like i have a boyfriend <laughs> like and then the, it's like it's just like it's never good enough and they're like oh well you don't even know your car i'm like well i've done a lot of work on my car and like other cars and like they're like well you don't have videos of it i'm like i have to post myself working on my car to prove that like it's social media like you believe everything you see like are you, you okay those envious people like yeah you, literally anybody that would ever say something like that you could literally just watch this podcast and see the way that you talk about literally everything down to the nitty-gritty and like know that you you have the knowledge and the experience to back up all the shit but they don't care because they'll just find something there's they always will. something no. yeah, like they it doesn't matter like i could argue with them for on. like an hour and like literally like give them like my freaking birth certificate and like they they wouldn't even believe it <laughs> It's just like the, the, there's nothing I can do to convince them. Like they always have to like convince themselves that there's like something else, and like I think that's like the most annoying part about being like a girl in the car scene or like the car community because like guys don't really have that. Like, e like I know guys that don't know anything about cars, and like people like praise them just because they're a guy that has a car, so they just like assume that like they know what they're talking about, and it's like just because you're a guy with a car and it's like a male dominated thing doesn't mean doesn't that mean like crap. they know anything about it. I can honestly sit here and to be real with you, you know more about this crap than I do. The modification side of things, you 100% know more than, know more than me. Like me a million fair. times over. Like even the fact that you've done a lot of the work on this car yourself, I'm not really big into that. Like I want to get more into that, but like- Do you? I do. I really do. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Like the net, we talk about like what I'm trying to get next. I w I'm debating between getting something that's like, like, you know, how you said when you bought that car, you were like, I didn't have much to do anything afterwards. I'm debating like, do I get something that puts me in that position? No. And I can say, oh, I have a nice car. Or I have my doors go up or whatever. Or do I get something that I'm like, okay, I can do this. And then I have a lot of money over to just go crazy on it. I think it depends. Um, I, don't think that it's smart to just spend all your money on something and have no money left over i mean obviously we like, don't make bite of decisions. <laughs> that's, super that's just that's just that like, like not a smart decision at the end of the day like i i understand like a lot of people like they really really want something and like i'll just spend all like uh, me but like i just think you should i'm an advocate for being a little uncomfortable after buying the car but like you still want to have room to like still like enjoy life like you don't want your right. life to like revolve around paying for your car absolutely you you, you want to be able to make your rent payment or yeah and like you want to be able to do things like to that. your car like if, if that's what you're into like some people like leaving their car stock and that's great but it's like if you want to do things to it like you're going to want to have that like leeway because like especially when you're getting like cars like this like it's not cheap to oh do stuff to them kidding me? this is one of the most expensive hobbies in existence <laughs> oh, 100%. yeah well i mean other than yeah. like planes and boats but i would say yeah like, <laughs> boats might be the number one thing or then planes yeah too that's true there's levels to the game. Yeah. <laughs> there's, le there's legitimate levels. I collect, there's I levels, collect jets. But like, I love jets. Yeah, I love jets. Yeah, yeah. Jets I've got seven. Cool. <laughs> I really want to get a pilot license. I got an open, open empty legger if you need it. That'd be sick, but it's that so expensive. Be, yes, literally. So you got to choose racing or pilot license. Yeah, yes. exactly. Well, anything else? I think, honestly. Anything else you want to get out while you're here? Yep. I don't think so. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah. This has cool. been this we has appreciate been awesome you coming time. on. Yep. Yeah, thanks. That was fun. It has been, honestly, this is probably one of the most real and like very good car conversations yeah we really just got to like chat about cars, chat about cars which like is, which is what we love to do yeah it's yeah, like I the mean, whole point, the point why we started this 100 yeah, <laughs> exactly the supercar connection literally behind us literally three yeah. supercar connection cars but yeah that's been a wrap we're here in novara shout out costume novara motorsports shout out eric at voodoo shout out bambi tune in for the episode see you guys later we're out